Welcome to Wednesday Comics. Brought to you by RootsOfTheSwampThing.com and Supercon 2018 Return of the Con. Keep turning those pages. Welcome to Wednesday Comics. To my right, we have the turkey himself, Alex. How you doing? Hello, everybody. Gobble, gobble. And across from me, the stuffing himself, Gary. I knew you were going to call me the stuffing. (laughs) So delicious. How are we doing? And I am Tofurkey himself, Marvin. How you doing? Tofu. Next gen. Tofu turkey. Tofu turkey. Oh, tofu turkey. Okay. People, you know, you gotta sounds go, horrible. You gotta reduce your footprint on this earth if you want it to survive, and you gotta go vegan. So. Yeah, I heard space has a lot of planets you can go check out. Hey, what's the moon? Have you seen this before? No. On uh, QVC, they're trying to sell something, and they're like, "What is the moon? Is it a planet or is it a star?" And somebody was like, looked it up and was like, "It's a natural satellite." And they're like, "That doesn't make sense. That's not right." Oh, <laughs> it's, it's not. A, it's not a planet. It's not a planet or a star. No. And one guy was like, it has to be a planet. There's things living on it. And I was like, what the fuck's living on the moon? You reminded me that she said there's stuff. The man on the moon isn't even an actual man. I it's wonder. Well, I moon. thought it was just like a remnant of a planet. Like uh, it was I like, thought it was like, like a giant be. rock. And so I thought it was a hunk With of a reflective surface. Well, let's ask our, our scientist but friend. If it, was, ask him. if it was part of a planet before and now it's revolving around a different planet, then that is a natural satellite. Because that's what it does. A satellite means it revolves around yeah. a bigger object. Well, it does because it does around our oceans. Why don't you ask Sam? Call him. I'll, 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 I'll see what he uh, Speaking of the I moon. I looked to phone a friend. Speaking of the moon, which uh, people think looks like cheese. Speaking of food. Alex, uh, what's your favorite Thanksgiving uh, food? This is Thanksgiving today. Happy uh, Thanksgiving. Gobble, gobble. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, Hello, everybody. <laughs> you probably just ate and you're listening to this to try to mellow out. and uh, uh, Don't worry. We'll keep you awake. I know you Or you're on your way. You're on your way doing and something. And you are starving to death because that food's Hopefully not Hopefully anywhere in the United States is not snowing yet. But um, Alex, what's your favorite uh, food? I I really do like uh, pumpkin pie. Love me a big... And it, it doesn't need to be homemade because sometimes I find the homemade pumpkin pie is kind of... Not grainy is maybe not the right word. But well, they don't use well, much sugar is yeah. what you're saying. I'm with you. No, I want, I want it's a little more. sandy. Yeah, that, maybe that's it because I want, I want that smooth fake stuff. With that, all that whipped cream. So I'm gonna chi- I'm gonna chime in here. That's my favorite food too. Is pumpkin pie. We'll make it. But what my mom makes, she makes a three layered pumpkin pie dessert. Oh, you know, you crumble. say your mom makes all this food. I've never had one piece of it. We're never invited over to the bro. Their I house. mean, we I had, don't know. We had what two shows at your house, and they wanted we had beer popcorn. and popcorn. How good was that popcorn? <laughs> that was good. Where was my thank you? And Where then, was my triple and those layer chips. pumpkin hey. pie? What was the other thing to you? Uh, nachos. The, the chicken nachos. Chicken nachos. Where was that at? And my mom wasn't there. He ate them all before well, we got one there. One day you f- you say, hey, they're going to come over and record the podcast. You meet mm-hmm. with some chicken nachos. Hey, we're just getting our kitchen redone, so maybe after that's done. That's where he's going to poison them, and then we're going to die after the show. Then yeah, I'll be like, oh, sorry, guys. I'm not that hungry, but you guys can eat the shit out of it. <laughs> oh, this is delicious. <laughs> Spike turkey, chicken. So pumpkin pie, do you like the more homemade, or do you go what Alex says? Um, I do actually like the homemade a little more because the problem with processed pumpkin pie is that crust is so flaky when you get oh, i love a flaky crust. As i like flaky i crust. know but i like it when it's like crispy like i don't like when it's like i just mean like yours is more like a crack like a graham cracker I or mine's had, actual pie crust oh no, i've only had ever real pie crust i've never had the graham cracker crust oh i'd, I'd, I'd much rather have the graham cracker crust really yeah Nah, i like a nice thick pie crust like with i mean that you got to create that that variety with the smooth pumpkin Mixed in with that hard pie crust. Nice. My favorite food, <laughs> just because it's so versatile. Tofurkey. Think about this. Tofurkey, this thing, you got to redu- you got to reduce your footprint on the dessert. Uh, no, it's um uh, corn. Any kind of you got corn on the cob. You got corn loose. You got corn. You can put a little spice in it. You can put a little butter in it. You can put a little salt in it. The thing works anyway. I wish people could see my face. You said corn, literally like. What I was thinking about corn it because I knew good. I knew I was going to bring this question up. Wait, corn in stuffing? Yeah, but, whatever. But, yeah, but your body can't digest the corn. All it does is get. Moved my, did into I say what's your favorite food that you can digest? No, what's my favorite <laughs> food that I can eat? I <laughs> yeah, said that's true. I'm just stating uh, it serves no purpose. Just moves things along. It does. It's, it's satisfying. It's, my hunger. Yeah, that's good. You my, like maybe, corn on the cob? Oh, I love corn on the cob. I'm not saying I don't like corn. I'm just saying that just. Dude, have you ever me. had? There's this like uh, Spanish you, corn where they put like pepper on the outside and oh god, what about jalapenos and cheese? Dude, I'm saying anything corn. 
Corn's good. Corn's the peach is good band. Um, uh, my honorable mention would be stuffing, though. Stuffing's pretty good. Oh, my God. Depending, so though. Some people make it too dry, and I'm not into it. See, if it's dry, yeah. I'd rather have it really moist stuffing. Yeah. God, that's good. It's now, like mashed guys, potatoes with... My mom makes really like, moist stuffing, yeah. Do you guys like a like beef stuffing, a chicken stuffing, what kind of, or no meat stuffing? No meat stuffing. No meat I've stuffing. never had a beef or a chicken. I don't know. I don't know what I've, I've had. had. A so- my favorite is sausage stuffing. You mix some pieces of sausage in no, there. Oh, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> no, you disgust. What did you, I say? It'll be your favorite thing. Dick in a box. What I did I say it. about this footprint? Well, okay, you want to put tofu in there, and then it's like that's not even existing. So toast stuffing. <laughs> Usually, it's just breaded, right? Bread stuffing. That's what I eat. Yeah, it's like bread stuffing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but, but you use gravy and stuff. But my in aunt makes a yeah, version yeah, where she adds sausage to it, like little, just like little, like pizza I'm not a sausage. Fan of sausage, really? Something about it is like the spice doesn't do it for me. Yeah. I, I like oh. I like some spice, but I don't like that kind of it's spice. Like a, I don't know it's what like it is. A bitter spice. Yeah, it's not really. I don't know. It so depends. Now, so now that sounds like good because I I like. Um, is it a what? Like I like biscuits and gravy, and I love it's like them. that exactly. That's what it tastes mm-hmm. like. That's why it's but like, I'm an old like man. garlic. Yeah. Like garlicky. What? No, that's not what mine, that's not what mine tastes like. <laughs> is that your biscuits and gravy taste like garlic? <laughs> Do you put garlic on your biscuits and no. gravy? Well, then you're fucking missing out. What? Who I does told, that? I, yeah, I've never heard that. You guys don't like garlic on bread? No, I, I like garlic on bread. But, oh, I see. You're not putting it in the sauce. You're putting it on your bun. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Still no, but okay. You know what I realize more and more as we do this show is the three of us could have grown up any differently. Like something that Alex's food childhood. Just said we like pumpkin and you, pie. And I know, but he said he likes a different pumpkin pie than you like. Yeah, he likes the. Uh, and then you said McDonald's we like. We both all agreed pie. we love stuffing, and then you come here with this sausage stuffing and. Dude, don't knock it till you try. Yeah, but you know the weird thing is that we still like these things, but we may like. That's what I'm saying. Like, right? Who's yeah, Spider Man? Do you like? Do you like Ultimate Spider Man more than Amazing? Uh, probably. Ooh, yeah, I like. So. I like Amazing. So. Because you read Ultimate. We, well, I've read what, what I've read is <laughs> I like good. Twenty ninety nine because his name's Miguel and. I relate with that. So. You know, I've been playing that PS4 Spider-Man game, and they've got the white and the dark, like purple, twenty ninety nine. That white suit is bitching. It's pretty cool. Uh, Alex just finished that game, right? You just did? Yeah. It's good. I just started Red Dead 2. I just finished the DLC for it, too. Uh, this is our Thanksgiving episode, so here's two things that are going to come out of the docket here. Uh, first thing first, game called Turkey. We're going to play here in a second, where we have some blazing wings from Buffalo Wild Wings. If you were at our live show on Supercon, you know those almost killed us. We have them in a boneless form, but un uh, sauced, you would say. And we have the sauce on the side, so we're going to dip oh, them with geez. these. We're going to dip them uh, in there. We have some forks here. And also, we have uh, <laughs> less hotter hot sauce. It's not hot at all. It's, um, where's that bottle at? It's uh, La Victoria Green Taco Sauce. Mild. It's very mild, it says. And uh, I will uh, let you know I eat all the time. It's not hot at all. So I just had to take some of the sauce off my finger after opening that. It's hot. Can't oh, taste God. It. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't even start of the game yet. So here's how the game Warming works. Up my my tongue. You're getting to the used spice. to it. Be, there's three rounds here. I did. Uh, oh, well, let me see. He tried to explain it to us. We weren't listening. There's three rounds here, and I did name all rounds. The first round uh, is uh, called. It is turkey. That's what the main. It's called the uh, the side. Right, and then we got win or lose. That's the that's the uh, appetizer, and then we got answer all three. That's the turkey at the end, the main course. Can't taste my tongue. So here's how it works. The first round has three series of three questions each, and what you're gonna do is you guys are gonna toss a coin here in a second. Get that app ready. Oh yeah, I'm gonna flip a coin app. Get a, gonna toss the app, and then whoever gets it can decide if they want to start or if they want to defer to the other person. When that person starts their series of questions, they'll say, I can answer one, two, or three. What that does is, if they say, I can answer three, let's say, and they do answer all three, I have a a, a number generator here, and it was going to pick a random number. And if he answers all three correctly, and he said he would answer all three correctly, uh, me and uh, the other person will have to um, eat a blazing wing here. Let's say they said, though, I can get one correct. And they do get one correct. Then the number one is the one in which me and somebody else would eat a blazing. If it lands on two or three, they would eat one of the wings with the lesser hot sauce, the uh, person who answered correctly there. That's because they didn't take a chance. That's why I'm going to, you're still going to kind of half lose there, right? Right. But if you answer wrong at all, then that person who answers wrong or does not, they say, I'll answer two right, and they get one right, they're still wrong on their guess. They have to eat a blazing wing. So that's the first round here. It's a series of 
uh, three questions, three series each. So somebody will only. So, be... there's, so there's three for him, three for me, and then there's a third one. No, there's only three rounds total of three questions. So somebody will only get one. That's why the person who gets the coin flip can decide if they want to keep it or if they want to go on. Because it doesn't matter because it depends on if you answer them correctly or not. So you okay. decide. Who wants to flip the coin? Who wants to call it? I'll flip it. You call it. Okay. You ready? Yep. Tails. Call it. Tails. <laughs> it is. Tails. It is tails. 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 So you can decide if you want to go first. That means you will get two rounds of three questions. Or if you want to defer to uh, Garrett here and you'll get one. So you can still get a possibility. So you either want. So I could still get screwed. It just depends on how smart I am and how good I am. There's at more it. chances. So if you pick the two rounds, there's more chances you could get screwed over and eat blazing wings uh, two times. But there's a possibility you can get six points if you get all three correct. Oh, I see. All three. So I mean, it depends. Even if you went one and one, and the person who gets second went all three, they get three points, and you would only get two. So how many you answer correctly, and if it. Lines up with how many you guess at the beginning. I'll go first. Year. Okay, so out of the first series of questions, how many can you answer correctly? One, two, two or three. You're going to go two. Okay. Doesn't Good matter strategy. which two, you just need two. Get them wrong. Get them wrong. Get them wrong. Oh, I see. It doesn't matter which three. It doesn't. It's not one, two, and three. You it's just to get three two questions. out of three of these correct. Okay. <clears throat> if you do, when we roll this, one and two will mean that me and Garrett have to eat a blazing wing. If it lands on three, then you have to eat the lesser hot sauce because you didn't go full three. So I got to get a half w- lose there. So if, the, worst, however, the worst they do is if I don't get anything. If you don't get two questions correct, you will eat a blazing wing. Okay. If he gets one right, though, then he, uh, yep. he just so goes. He doesn't it. get two right. I, I, I've, named it, I've named it two, so I have to get at least two to I not mean, eat the blazing. What, what qualifies for the lesser sauce? To the if I sauce. get both and you guys roll if a three. He gets him to, if he gets two correct and we roll it and it lands on three, then he has to eat the lesser sauce. Because mm. he didn't go full in, but it's still not a lose. It's still not, right. it's not really that hot. So. Okay. He says that, and it's going to be worse than blazing. Yeah, not hot for him. <laughs> That's going to be the nuclear sauce. I eat that sauce. daily. I, eat, I drink it out of the, the bottle. So you're used to it. <laughs> the bottle. <laughs> to be fair, I can handle the blazing, so that should be fine. Uh, Thor has two war goats who pull his chariot. What are their names? Is that two questions? <laughs> yeah, I need both their names. Tooth Grinder that's, and Tooth Nasher. That's correct. So one wow. correct so far, one nice. correct, Alex. He only needs one more. So you, the next one, uh, well, who knows? He might be, we're probably going to fucking eat these things. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, <laughs> I, should, I should make this a little harder. What's the name of Tony Stark's personal butler? Is it Jeeves, Jarvis, Alfred, or Jennings? Oh, I wasn't expecting you to give us options. Yeah, Jarvis. So, uh, what classically was the weakness of Green Lantern's ring? Is it kryptonite, the color yellow, lead, or water? Yellow. That's correct. Well, I had to think here because I was thinking of like Bronze Age or one of them. So was you wood. did get. Oh, actually, we might have a good chance here for lands on three. Uh, you did get three correct, but you said you only get two, so you didn't take the chance to say a three. You should have said three. Then we would have to eat a guarantee. So we get here. a three, then we're safe. So if it's on three, Alex is the lesser hot sauce. If it's one or two, me and you are going blazing, baby. Here it is. Here's the app. I'm going to load it right up here. We're just using all these digital dice and I'm gonna coins. I'm going to put a three in here. So You know who isn't a part of the digital stuff? Over here. <laughs> it's a maximum, a minimum of one and a maximum of three. So let's see what it is here. Random. Oh. Why does it say? Oh. Two. You guys are doing blazing. <laughs> what the fuck, man? How does this work? Okay. So we're going to do one of these babies. Aim for the bushes, man. You know, ironically, how come it's every time... That I'm in this game, I always have to eat the hot wing first. Alex, good enough? Yes. Is that yes. good? All right, aim for the bushes. <laughs> Does that look too much? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, actually, yours looks really full. His, I was, I mean, like you said. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> just touched, we All just right. touched wings. Ready? So. All right, here we go. God, dude, how hot is this? It's going to suck. Oh, and it's on his lip. I forgot about this. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's hot. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, man. Payback's going to be a bitch when I have to eat a blazing or like seven blazing in a row. Beer helps, right? Yes. Uh-huh. I was going to say, luckily, we're not having any deductions, right? No. Okay. Especially now that we're not doing the somewhere else is what they think is hot. And we were like, that's fine. This is going to hurt like hell. Oh, that's so hot, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Marvin's going to throw up. 
Oof. Wash that thing down. <laughs> Water doesn't help. As I don't even think, does the beer actually help? Does the alcohol kind of kill the burn or? Not really. Okay. Uh, to me, it always makes it, it worse. worse. We should get those uh, celery sticks out. Alex, you got to keep the show going. <laughs> so while well, Marvin's dying, uh, but to be fair, I don't have any of the questions or the answers. Um, you know what the biggest thing, and I, I know we're going to get into this. Garrett brought in our poster from Supercon. And I tell you what, we look fucking awesome on that. Garrett, you probably should get in on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going. Because <clears throat> otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna burn out on the second round that I go. God, I really hope you fuck up and you have to eat <laughs> blazing again. <laughs> oh, funny. Garrett, how many questions? <laughs> Shit, going two. <laughs> it's hot, man. I know, I know, and I know. I realize when you get these two questions, it's gonna suck. <clears throat> So now if he gets so if he gets the two and then it rolls a three, he only has to eat the light, but we don't have to eat the blazing. Correct? Okay. All Marvin right. is shaking his head. Yes, I am correct. Let's do it. I, I can talk now. <sighs> yeah. I'm okay now too. It's so fucking hot, but I can at least talk. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you don't just leave that bad boy open. Yeah. Oh, also PSA, if you don't like the sound of people eating food, you might have to skip this one I'm this week. I am eating, trying to eat away from the mic. That's why I wasn't talking, really, because I eating that celery. Here you go. First question. All the following. Who first appeared in Action Comics with Superman? Satara, Warlord, or Ultra Boy? Satara. That's correct. Nice. <laughs> it's so hot. Go, go, go. Do it again. What's Sergeant Rock's first name? Right, multiple choice? No. Uh, how much time do I get? Less than a minute, hopefully. Mm. Sergeant. Was that Sergeant Rock from D.C.? Who lives on that island? Joseph. Incorrect. It's Frank. Damn. I should have made these fucking harder. Really? That one was too hard. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. I, went, I didn't know that one. Who was the first Flash? Oh, I can't think of his name right now. It's going to drive me nuts. Oh, my God. I should know this. Oh, it's coming to me. Coming to me. <laughs> Poor choice <Tyson> words. <laughs> <laughs> um... How much time? Yeah, about 20 seconds left. I was counting. <laughs> um, fuck. Usually I know this. 10. I'm drawing a blank. Um, Four. Fuck. Al. <clears throat> I can't remember. Jay Garrett. Oh, God. I knew the first name. I didn't know the last name. Oh, guess I just guess I'm we looked out, Alex. So now, no matter what? Yeah, because you didn't get two. Shit. All right, guys. Hopefully, thank God it's Alex's turn next. <clears throat> yeah, what, so I can get another good point? And so, Alex, you get the first one right, so you got two points. Yep. Garrett just got the whole thing wrong because he didn't get him, so you get zero points. Alex, how many? Two. Okay. Eyes here. Uh-huh. Who drew Why the Last Man? Man, that makes me mad that I don't know that. Because I think... Um, Yurik. I don't know. <clears throat> Pia Guerrera. Okay, who drew Watchmen? That one you should get. Come on, man. Who would have known that Alex would have got this one? The uh, artist one. I thought this would be uh, Garen. I thought he would have got these, but we lucked out here. Save these for later, Mark. You can go eat it. I was like, well, I know. I just have my second one. I was like, there's only four in there left now. Well, I split them in half. Shit. This is the one that I should know because we talk about it all the time. I know the writers of both those books. 
Uh, John Davis. There you go. Yeah. Well, I knew it was wrong. Dave Evans. Oh, so you got two wrong anyways. Well, who's the draw? Who's drawing Doomsday Clock? Hey, Davis. Frank. No. Yeah, it's John Davis. Gary Frank. Fuck. <laughs> oh, good. I was still wrong. Alex, your first one. Here you go. There you go, baby. Good. Yep, good. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's starting to wear off down. now, finally. Then I get up again. So, so far, Alex has two points. Everybody, and Garrett has zero. That's what we have so far. So, going into the final round. Alex, you get to decide in the next round. Now, this round is just called win or lose. Wait, we're in the final round already? No, no. Oh. Semifinals. Or uh, penultimate round. So, in this one, is either you get it right or you don't get it right. Alex, there's only three questions in this round, though. So do you want to have the two questions, or do you want to go with the one question? <laughs> Jesus, sorry. I did some pop while before. It's not even the spice that's getting me. I got the hiccups. <clears throat> do you want two questions? Or do you want one? <laughs> he has one. zero points. You have two. So even if he gets two, the most he can do is tie you. One. Garrett. <laughs> Who did all the covers for Astral City? Artist. Um, oh, what's his name? Alex Ross. Correct. Gary Frank. <laughs> How many did you say I would get right? Nice. I'm, I'm only doing one. No, no. In this one, if we lose, we eat one. Who's we? Where, like, if you get it wrong, you would eat it. And if we get it right, we eat it. Fuck. All right. Keep going. No, that was it. Now Alex's question because he gets one, and then you get you get another one. <clears throat> Alex, who is Bane's father? Either his real name or his uh, pseudonym. Either one's fine. Dumb question. Do you know this one? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, the darkness. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. King Snake, aka Edward. Uh, excuse me, Edmund uh, Dorans. Garrett, what is Red Skull's daughter's name? Pink. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, shade of red? Anybody? Red um, Skull's daughter. Um, what's Red Skull's name? Um, <laughs> fuck. Well, doesn't she have a fa- she has a uh, stage name? That's what I'm asking for. Her bad guy name. Yeah, like Red oh. Skull has a name. What's her name? <clears throat> Red Skull's daughter's name is Mystique. Incorrect. It's, Red Skull. It's Sin. <laughs> so what? So you you got one wrong, so you get to eat one. You got two wrong. How do you get two wrong? Because he got one right, so technically. Oh. And then, so I eat one, too, because of that. He got one right, and then you got one wrong. So you get to eat two, and we get to eat one. Okay. And the catch. hottest sauce? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. I don't really care anymore. I think we're all good. Yeah, it's, this isn't going to end well, guys. God. Not again. We're all going to be. You know what? I'm going to wait a minus second here so I can talk while you guys are struggling. And then when you guys are good, then I'll eat it. That way we're not all off mic dying. <laughs> but it looks fine. <laughs> do you guys like natural? Do you guys usually like hot stuff? I know Garrett does. I do, but. I'm going to turn my mic off so I can just chew in front of it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. When it's overly hot? No. How many Scoville units? We looked this up for the uh, live show, right? It's like a million, I think, for this. Let's look it up. Google it. Blazing Buffalo Wild Wings Scoville. See how hot these babies are. I'm pretty sure they're pretty hot. I think the worst thing is I'm trying to... I tried to eat them quick, but then I ended up just swallowing more hot sauce the first time. It hurts. Yeah, I'm going to start eating that uh, ranch like catnip here in about t- 20 seconds. So, oh, yeah. You guys are good? Yeah. All right, keep the show going while I die. Away. I don't know how people could eat like oh, ghost pepper ones. The um, blazing sauce is at 350,000 Scoville units. Mm. Um, 
Oh, Jesus. That's hot. And the worst thing is, I'm like it hot to begin with. How do you even rank this, though? What's well, like. Oh, shit. Pop hurts. Here we go. <laughs> Carbonation hurts. Oh. Should have brought fucking milk for this. <laughs> we weren't thinking it. Oh, God. It's hitting me. Last year, we were smart. We brought ice cream. Okay, there we go. That's uh, so then around two. Regular mild sauce is 5,000 Scoville units. We're at 350,000, boys. So here is, here's the last round. Here's how it works. Alex, you're yeah. the one who had two points. He had one oh, after these first two games. So this thing can go. Either you can choose to do it or he can choose to do it. Or, I mean, you can choose for him to go. Get the answer all three correctly to win. So if you don't answer, how many do three, I have to eat if I get them wrong? One. Oh, I'll do it. <clears throat> You'll do it. All right, here we go. Round five, the final round. Alex, because uh, if I have to eat three, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I won't even make him do it. <laughs> this is one for one of them, and uh, here we go. Who wrote a majority of Fear itself from Marvel? That event, Marvel event. Fraction. Yep, that's correct. Matt, first name. Ed Brubaker wrote for Uncanny X-Men. True or false? Ed Brubaker. False. Sorry, I was eating. Um, No, it's true. So. That's my last question. uh, These three writers have written for Daredevil. True or false? Gary Conway, Frank Miller, and Kevin Smith. True. Correct. So what does that mean? Me. So he didn't answer all three correctly, so he has to eat one more. Alex? I will. We got to give me a minute. How you doing? Your eyes are all red. That's the final question? That was final? Yeah, it's final. Can I try the less hot sauce? Yeah, you can. Since Maybe we all... We each get one more after that. Level out the... Oh, I'm just going to fucking dip in her... Uh. I want to try this first, though. My roof of my mouth mm. feels like it's peeling off. <laughs> yeah, my. Like, that's how much this hurts. It's a good chance. And I wish I liked ranch or blue cheese. It's blue cheese. Just give up and do it. Your eyes are so wet right now. <laughs> that's what I was saying. He's, like, crying <laughs> over here. Well, at least usually, usually I'm fine. And, like, my it's, it's just my mouth hurts. It's hot. Like, even my tongue isn't too bad. The fucking roof of my mouth is burning. It's like someone cut it open, and now I'm sticking salt in it. Here he goes. The final one, Alex, dipping in, then they get a nice good dip. He's staring at it now. Good? Yes, why? Okay. <laughs> just... He's looking at it now. His nose is running. His eyes are crying. Man, looks like he just read. Uh, Dive. Go, go, go. Looks like he just read Day Tripper again. <laughs> <laughs> There he goes. Now you'll have to take that. You'll just have to try blue cheese tonight. Face all red. I think it'll be worth it. Your face is like so red right now. His neck. You're like Violet Balm Garden. Fucking Willy to be Wonka. Fair, I've been drinking beer and it does kind of tend to make me red. Just a little bit of beer? Like if you had a, a sip? I've been. Oh shit. Of course, the worst part is swallowing that damn shit. <laughs> Actually, that one didn't go bad, but me because I can't feel my mouth, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I think it does get better after a while. Like you're, like you said, you kill it and then. Well, that last one wasn't as bad. Doing okay. You know, people like eating hot stuff because then it's like your body receiving pain, so you get endorphins, right? I don't think I've ever felt good from eating something hot. I don't enjoy that. Eat a lot of. I like it, right? spice, but I don't like overly spicy. Where like this is overly spicy. We get one more. Yep. Okay. Dip it in that blue cheese, bud. It's the best decision I ever made. Swiss well, congratulations, Alex. I actually know you lost. So, so I won? I don't Technically. Know. Yeah, I suppose I gave up all my numbers for... I think we all lost in this game, and the fans here won. Hearing us, well, you're, you're hearing us eat now. That's probably, that probably works for you. I'll wait to eat, eat that later when you guys are <clears throat> talking, but that's the game Turkey. <sighs> Just know that we're all three in pain. Internally, I'm kind of trying to keep it together. If I wasn't on my the mic, my tummy right hurts. Now, if I wasn't on the <laughs> mic right now, I would be probably uh, 
drinking a lot of liquids. Uh, turkey. Uh, today you're eating turkey, probably eating a lot of it. Some stuffing, but another thing that Thanksgiving is good for is uh, saying what you're thankful for. We did this last year and years in the past. Uh, top five things you're thankful for, for in comics. Milk. <laughs> um, the comics. Comics or comics oh. related, whatever the two. Um, and so uh, we thought we'd, uh, after we play this game when we're half dead, <laughs> we would go around. Just like how you guys ate those turkeys, you're falling asleep, you're half dead also. So we're both half dead together. And we're going to go around and say what we're thankful for. And uh, Alex, since I see you got the energy right now from all that hot sauce, you want to go first? Your top five? Number five. Oh, this is actually a top five? Yeah. I just, no offense, I kind of treat this just as a thankful. <clears throat> so my first you one is actually. Do you have five of them? I do have five. So my first one's kind of being selfish. Um, Spider-Man PS4. I waited a long time for this game to come out, and I've. I love the Batman Arkham games. I think I, I just love going through the city. Excuse me, and vomiting out the side. <laughs> um, but I, this, this game just feels so refreshing. So you get to be Spider-Man, obviously, going through town, web-slinging. You get to fight bad guys at the end of the game. Like, they just show up. Oh, my gosh, it's so good. The amazing graphics, the bad guys that you meet. This is a whole brand new story. I love, love, love this game, and it is top tier with Arkham Knight, or Arkham Arkham series. Nice. Arkham City is still better than Arkham Knight. Um, but that's it. I mean, it, it's a simple, selfish reason. I have waited for a Spider-Man game since Spider-Man 2 from 2004 came out, because that game was amazing. And this game, I think, actually picks it up a notch. I actually feel like I'm Spider-Man when I play this game. Nice. Who's next? Me? Um, That's the way it's all worked. I'm just, just checking, man. <laughs> Usually it goes you, him, me, and reviewing comic books. So. Um, yeah, but he's dying over there. He, he can't handle it. My number five right now would be... I, I did a thankful for this last year. Is that kind of... Whatever. Um, Batman White Knight. Um, like That was like one of my favorite comics this entire year. And it was so cool. Sorry, guys. Uh, to see... Like a new Batman story that I've never seen before. Um, that does happen quite often, but I mean, like, it's cool that Sean Murphy can basically do whatever he wanted with Batman, and he made it such a rich story. Um, I think we all enjoyed it thoroughly, and that last issue was I'm so excited. good. I'm excited and for we're excited for that out. sequel. Like, I think, you know, this year hasn't been a thing, like, I had comics come out that's like, Oh, this is the coolest event comic coming out right now. But <clears throat> I think there's enough anticipation for that sequel that I'm so pumped for that sequel. But yeah, Batman White Knight, I think, changed how you tell um, stories forever. So uh, that's definitely what I'm thankful for, one of the things. It's a good choice. It seems to me, Jesus, I'm dying. But it seems to me... <laughs> that uh, Sean at least had some sort of inkling that he would get to do more. And so remember on the show, we said like he had rules to his universe and he promises to his fans um, about the book. Uh, like he would never have uh, inner monologue boxes. He would never, <clears throat> he would never, um, no delays, no delays. He would, he would always try to make cool uh, gadgets and cars. And he like this. That's what he likes to draw. So he said, there'll be more, than enough bad things inside the book. But if he gets to make it again, then he said, if people die, they'll stay dead. Yeah. So that makes me excited that they are giving him a chance with, uh, uh, taking on the universe and doing more with it. I, Batman white Knight was not only creatively a success, but I also think financially for them, it was a, su- a success. So it's nice to see people like not only just us, but pe- everybody was like, Oh, that's pretty cool. Like even like mainstream. And so like, it's a book. I just saw, um, who was it? God. Uh, I just saw somebody promote it and said, hey. Oh, who was it? Was some, it was something in Main Street. Might have been even Bars and Noble. Those, hey, uh, this holiday season, make sure that you pick up this book. That sounds right, because I know they were doing like a buy two, get one free. Yeah, but they were promoting Batman White Knight, which I thought was like, oh, okay, cool. Right. Um, so it's kind of weird, because it's like more mature than other books, but still, they wrote it, so. Inside, because you know why? Um, why I thought it was weird because somebody in the comments, I read the comments for it, and one lady was like, "Oh, my grandson would like this." I was like, "Ooh, how old's your grandson though?" Like, like watch out. Um, number five. Oh, here's my list. So, uh, 
I'm going to uh, prepare you for this list a little bit. Uh, I did co uh, super serious and kind of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Heartfelt? Yeah. Uh, number five, uh, the guest that we've had in the show this year, uh, comic book look, all of them in general, uh, Phil Hester, John Borland, uh, Dylan, and Mikey. Um, if you have a guest, no, that was mainly it for this year. Did you say Boylan? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, hashtag guest list one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like at that Supercon show, when we were up there and everybody, when we threw out the word, everybody was in. Uh, for me, and knowing like this community, especially we have built around here with doing this and then them doing their own things, and everybody is driven to try to make something uh, creative here, uh, whether or not it's in like artists for the artists over on the show, or John Boiling with his uh, zine that he's making, or his Love of Swamp thing, us here with this podcast, Comic Book with their channel, everybody, even Sergio America with his uh, YouTube channel, he does that every week still. Um, even people who, uh, haven't uh, been on the show uh, officially, but have uh, dropped uh, some uh, voicemails like uh, Mark down in Tennessee, the bagging board of bad boy on YouTube. Like that whole thing for me, it just it just warms my heart that all these people are like into this so much that no matter what, like you're like, hey, you want to do this thing? You're like, yes, it's comic related. And then we all became friends through that. And we're like, oh, now we're all like. When I we put that word out, it was like you want to be on the show. They all were like, "Yes, absolutely." So that is that is a really cool thing. Like we're all like cross promoting each other, but also having fun, like sharing the hobby that we all love. Um, whether it's from writing, drawing, or just being a reader, it's it's just you can just feel the electricity when we have all like, especially in that show, we had all our guest hosts in one room. But even when we each have like each guest host by themselves here as a on our show like they bring so much electricity into the studio and we just love bouncing off all of our guest hosts and it's like it's that's what this whole podcast is about is having conversations about the things we love which happens to be comic books well and the one thing that all of our uh, all of you listeners miss out on is the the conversations after or even before we get into the show you know we're sitting there with mikey we're sitting there with with boylan talking about things we're talking to dylan about his book we have we could sit there for three hours before we even get to the show talking about these things, getting to know these guys and to share their their love for what they're doing. And a lot of that's all we have is love for these guys. Cause you got Boylan, you got Mikey, you got Dylan, you got comic book look, all these guys love what they do. And they do it because they love it. Uh Alex number four. Uh the mine's le- mine's less uh heartfelt. MCU's Infinity War. I uh I wouldn't say it's the best movie that Marvel had ever put out, but to see them actually take the Guardians, to take the Avengers, to take all these characters that they've spent 10 years building and to finally put them all together, it made a good showing and it makes me excited to see where the MCU can go. Also, I mean, I realize the realistic part of me is also going, I'm a little weary on how long this can last, but 10 years is a strong way. It's lasted 10 years so far. And obviously, you know, Yahoo's like us are going to the movie. So I just I'm I'm excited to see where this next year goes and this next phase, what phase four starts after this next movie. So I just I'm I'm excited to be on the ride. I'm excited for for fans like us and for all around the world who <clears throat> get to be in this era where loving comic books and loving these these movies is acceptable. And to see where all of the um, CG stuff is at now and how realistic these characters can look. Yeah, man. That movie, one of the best superhero, if not the one of the best superhero movies of all time. I would say one of. I would still say probably Dark Knight, um, Winter Soldier. There's a few other ones I say is probably still better. But Mm -hmm. I think the ensemble and the amount of what they, they filmed this movie and then two years later they said, hey, don't say anything. Right. It definitely is an accomplishment just in movie making history. It's just for 10 years to be building to one movie and then sitting in that theater. Like The Dark Knight, I love The Dark Knight. I love Winter Soldier, but just like comic book, like you said, like the comic book, like craziness that can happen in books and like event wise, like the, a real event, that felt like an event. Mm-hmm. Like w- there was no like side stories that didn't mean anything with the plot. It was all like it was all one big scene basically <clears throat> of Thanos. 
going after these gems and them trying to stop it. Like we had built up to that point, so there was no need to like introduce some introduce somebody new and have to explain their backstory. Uh, everybody was there already. That was major players and like so. By the time, just like an event, by the time we get there, all it is is like this is a whole big action movie living up to that blockbuster that we wanted. And by the end, uh, I wasn't disappointed. And mm-hmm. it's very easy for ten years to be waiting for a movie and be like. Uh, this is going to be good. And to pull that off is uh, props to uh, Kevin and everybody involved there. Well, and it makes me excited to see the next movie, whatever they finally decide to name it. I thought it was Annihilation. I don't know if that's the actual. They haven't confirmed yet. So. It all, the, the, <clears throat> Kevin, however you say his last name, Fahey? Fahey said that it's coming out before the end of the year. The trailer is oh, with the title. With review. the title. So it's one, but then my thought is that I go from Infinity War and I haven't seen Ant Man the Wasp. It's on my to do list. It's just. I'll get to it eventually. I'll probably get to it the next by Christmas. <clears throat> but it makes me excited to see this follow-up movie and to know where we're going to go and what what stakes are. I mean, I'm all about the stakes. I want to know what's on the line. And so I'm, I'm excited and I'm thankful that they took the time to make this movie and that they were as dedicated to it as the fans are now. Um, my number four is the fact that Action Comics is good. <laughs> <laughs> is good. <laughs> I, you know, the whole time that Bendis was coming over, like my excitement started out being like, okay, sure. Um, it was mixed with some frustration because uh, Gleason and Tomasi were leaving that book and they had planned like at least three or four years worth of storytelling. But also at the time, you know, we made that point on the show, they weren't really doing much with the character. So it wasn't like justified, like, oh, we don't get to tell stories about Superman anymore. It's like, well, you're not really doing anything right now. Like, well, true. Um, But when Bendis came over, you know, we read that little eight page story in Action Comics 1000, and it was like, okay. And we did the DC Nation Zero, and that was holy shit bad. And then you get to The Man of Steel, six issue mini. Super not good and disappointing. Kakapupu. Kakapupu. And then you get to Action Comics 1001, like super sick cover by Patrick Gleason. That's why he's ripping his shirt off, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, like it looks great. So at least it'll look great. I go in, cover to cover, amazing Superman comic. Like, one of the best Superman comics I've ever read. And continuing that is like every issue I almost tell, like tell these two that I'm like, holy crap, this is so good. This is such like they're at the Daily Planet. Jimmy's in it. Uh, Perry's in it. You got Lois in it. You got so many Superman as things that it's just really, really good storytelling. And then on the other hand, you know, the Superman title is not very strong at all because it's more trying to amp up the new villain that I don't think Ben. I'm starting to think that it was just a Dio and Lee that made this new villain for Bendis to write about and that villain just sucks like Rogel's are um but action comics i'm just thankful that like you know we've had the like i had those storylines in the new 52 right after grant morrison left or when you guys were reading superman by george perez you know like how it was like super wordy and things like that and it's like i'm i don't want to drag my heels in in the sand basically i want to read a good superman book kind of like you know Tom King's and the Action Comics 1000. Like, there's so much good stories you could tell about Superman, and he doesn't just need to have to be a trope. That's just like he's a mega god, you know? So, yeah, very thankful there's a great Superman comic, and that's Action Comics. Have you uh, gone to Walmart and see if you can find Tom King's Superman story? Uh, that no. That thousand page. Uh, I giants? still can't justify it. I just can't pay five bucks when 80 pages is stuff I already own, and then the other 20 is new content. Like, I wish I could just buy just the new content, because I totally would. Um, I get why they're doing it, to get new fans in the comics and everything, but I, it's just not for me to try that way of reading Sounds comics. Sounds to me like you're not super dedicated. So I think part well, of it is that... Well, I know, but it's not <laughs> it's not given to me in a medium that is acceptable. Like, What do you mean? It's like $10 issue number one. Is that the medium not, you read everything else in? Yeah, but not... When not I, the format. So I want to pay twice for the same content. But it would be no. one one of those things that if it was the only issue that Tom King had been in, I would actually be like, okay, I like Tom King enough, I would get that. My number four is uh, Jeff Lemire. Uh, the year of Jeff Lemire, volume two, uh, this year, right? Last year was number one. So uh, I was thinking, I was going to put a book on here, number four, and then I was thinking about what favorite books, and they're all Jeff Lemire books. Like, uh, we just got done Royal City, which was great That this means year. you need to Gideon branch Falls. out more. <laughs> Gideon Falls, uh, obviously my favorite to send her, just send it this year. Um, 
uh, <laughs> Terrifics is, I think, a fun book yeah. to read. And uh, Jeff has more coming out. And every time Jeff puts out a book, I think Jeff hits a certain uh, chord with me that his books can be fun to read, like Black Hammer can be, uh, but they can be like a rural city where I really do enjoy just like reading about those people's lives and like how they're coming to conclusions with, you know, themselves, their family, and their feeling, feelings of a certain situation. And it's just like the man is so versatile in like what he can write. His genres are going from Descender for you guys reading like a sci fi book, pure sci fi, to Black Hammer, which is superheroes. And then he can go to Royal City, which is, you know, a family drama. And all three are a top notch. So it's a man that I, I really do love. Also, going back to a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the lace. And for a man that consi- consistently puts out good work at a consistent rate, not to worry about where's his book, uh, I'm thankful for that too. So, <clears throat> Jeff Lemire. Yeah, yeah. The year <laughs> of Jeff Lemire. Bye Returns. <clears throat> top tier Jeff Lemire. So, my, I've got, I do have a couple of slash marks because I'm more than thankful for just one book to have gotten good again. Uh, my number three is uh, TMNT, hashtag, or slash, Amazing Spider-Man. Two books that, so after issue 50 of Turtles, we lost the Shredder. Shredder was dead. I mean, in all honesty, you need I know you need to kill off the big enemy, but I miss the Shredder. That's one of the best characters out there made for the Turtles was the Shredder. He's the most, I mean, just, I, I, anyway, I love him. So he's gone. So we had kind of this, like, you know, 30 issues of, well, now what do we do? Filling in, we finally got back into the Turtles being a team. Mikey finally got over their dad, kind of taking over the Foot Clan, and they're back together. Clan Hamato, I love it, and I just I can't get enough of it. And speaking of which, I realize I'm on a Spider-Man high. Uh, Nick Spencer is blowing my mind with the Amazing Spider-Man run so far. That first seven issues was great. I know Garrett and I talked about issue eight, eh, a little a little weaker, but I think a part of it is that it was the filler issue until we get to number nine where we actually can finally build into what we have so it's just right. introduc- introduction to these other characters i love 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 amazing spider-man as of right now i think there's been a complete refresh of the character i mean when you have a writer writing one book for 10 years like it doesn't leave a lot of creative outputs like you basically are trying to find new things and it's like i'm surprised that dan slot stayed as long as he did like 10 years is a long time um But I think, yeah, Nick Spencer, like, it's just fun having a new take about the same old Peter Parker that we love, Mm -hmm. you know, like, he's the down on his luck, like, good guy just trying to be a hero, but, like, it's not that easy. Well, one of the the best issues of Amazing Spider-Man is issue seven, when they're in the uh, no-name bar. Yeah. That was, that was honestly my favorite issue of this run. It was really good. Just because it's not even Spider-Man. It's Peter Parker. Right. And I'm not normally one for Peter Parker. I mean, I, like, I mean, I like the guy, but I get the book for Spider-Man. Right. But it's so good just to see Peter be like, I know all the shit about Spider-Man because I was there. Right. And he's so like I, super intelligent. And like, that's like when people forget that, you know, we talked about like Heroes in Crisis at the beginning of the month, um, a couple weeks back. It's like. They for like writers can forget that he's a forensic scientist. It's like he's not just fast, or Luke's not just a Jedi. He's yep. also a Starfighter pilot. Um, <clears throat> my number three is Jeff Lemire. I was gonna have. Uh, uh, I just don't want to go out of order, but uh, yeah, same thing that you were saying, Marvin. Like, and Alex. I mean, he's one of our favorite writers. I think if there was a top five writers, he'd be number one right now. Because like, just no one can do it better tell me someone else who does the most consistent amount of books on time and they i mean like anybody else you could barely say that that happens jeff lemire he just get he's pumping out books like crazy i don't think anyone has as many titles as him right now um and the thing is that he's got a genre of everything right horror action down to earth royal city i mean it's just the man knows how to write yeah and it's just good content. Like it could be an editor heavy kind of thing. And he, he knows if he's like, I'll do it or I don't want to. And if he's doing the book, that means he wants to, if he, he's not writing just to get a paycheck. He's doing it. Cause he's passionate. Oh, about century. It. I forgot about century. That was great. Too. That was great. That was really great. Yep. So Royal city was great. Uh, descender. So excited for a sender. Like, oh, yeah. that's going to be one of the best books. Is that 2019? Yep. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it as yeah. a fan of that. Because you have. You know, I, th- I, yeah, think, I think that's like your one homework assignment, Marvin, is actually read Descender. I used one, to read Why the Last Man, too. 
Well, he'll never read that. <laughs> he'll be Marvin the last. I got a week <laughs> off coming up here soon, so may I read something? Doubt it. No, I can't. My, I take care of my son. Uh, <laughs> number three. <laughs> I just mean he's yeah. getting his tonsils out on how much pain you think. Oh, as I see. Yeah, so I see. Uh, that makes more sense than he's going to be home with you. That okay, well, uh, number three. Uh, going back to my serious thing. Uh, uh, the fans of the podcast, uh, seeing you know, interacting with any of them on Twitter or uh, however they contact us, and you know, it can range from you know when we got the email from Sam and he was trying to explain the uh, Nith Metal, uh, whereas like I just randomly people like uh, two days ago on Twitter. I don't know if you guys saw this. Somebody was just like. Hey, does anybody have any podcasts that they want to recommend? Somebody who I've, I've never never heard of from before, which is like I listen to Wesley Comics mostly, and I just like the like their posts because it's just I don't know. You know, we get kind of lost because we get in this room when we do it. I edit, it, I put it out, and uh, I do look at the numbers, and I kind of forget that it's kind of weird that people listen to this. Uh, I mean, it doesn't seem strange for anybody to listen to this right now. They're like, oh yeah, I listen to this. I like to listen to these guys talk, but. Whenever somebody comes up to us and says, hey, listen to the podcast, or anybody who says, hey, I started listening to your podcast, who we even know, I find that a little strange uh, just because it's something that we're not used to. But I do love that going back to like even what I said with number five, like bringing a community within here. We have a community of local people, but this is bringing a community of greater people from all over the world together. And not just our podcast, any other podcasts I listen to, too, like where I become a fan of that. I Just in general, like these things that are reaching out to these people who maybe they don't have anybody to talk to comic books about. And they listen to this and they hear this and they can kind of, you know, uh, hear this and be like, oh, okay, and get somebody else's perspective on it. Or also like, you know, when we talk about a book and they like the book, it's just, you guys know, when we talk about comics together, it's just a good time in general. So for them to hear somebody that, uh, even that's what happened when I listened to podcasts back in the day, uh, it's just good to just hear other people like talk about comics and when it's such a small world and I brought Alex in and then we met Garrett and, and Corey and then you can actually find people who are local, like any kind of conversation about something you love, I think, uh, is, uh, I would be thankful for. So I just, I, I don't know. I just love that somebody would be like, or that this dumb show. <laughs> and I say dumb because it's just three guys who were like, Hey, do you want to do this thing? And we had no clue what we we're doing when we first started. We're 120, some episodes in, but the time list is, I'm not sure. I can't do the math. Uh, 122 <laughs> was the last one I edited. So, um, but it's crazy. Yeah. 122 episodes. It's 25. 125. And then of the forecast, and then of anything else we have done, the special reports, it's just the amount of content that's out there, but then also the people who listen to it. That's just still crazy to me after all this time. So, yeah, that's awesome. And like, thank you mm-hmm. fans for listening. Like, that's awesome. That's, we love this community. It's really fun. Well, we keep doing it for you and we keep doing it for us. This is mm-hmm. something that the three of us would have done without you listening, but we appreciate it more because it's, it's like it, that pumpkin but, pie, but it's, right? It's, you put the whipped cream on top. That's everything's a little extra. But it's just one of those things cream. that, yeah, we, we could sit and talk about this, but then it's fun to get those people who respond to us or when I ask for, Hey, what book do you guys want us to talk about next? And you answered. I love that. I want to hear what you guys want from us. Cause if there's a new book that we're not reading that you think we should try. Somebody yeah. is going to say to uh, read why the last man, the last book. I know there's one fan out there that might tell us to read Aquaman, but uh, once that movie tanks, no. <laughs> well, once that movie tanks, I'll probably be done watching DC movies. Alex? <clears throat> My number two is Tom King slash Jeff Lemire. I think two... All these slashes, bro. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I want to... I couldn't just have it be five because my last one actually is a meaningful one. Mm. And it leads into, I would assume, the last part of our conversation would be just actual thank yous. Mm -hmm. But Tom King is much like Jeff Lemire. And both those men can put out books on a weekly basis. There's half a week where we get Tom King. The other half is Jeff Lemire. And they're both just putting out amazing work. I'll just say my number two is Tom King, too. So. Uh, is you know what? Is there Tom there's a lot of black backlash online for Tom King, and I don't understand it because that guy, really, yeah. And you know what I think it is is that we talk about all the time in the show is that he's he's writing characters that seem true to them, but they're also characters stepping outside of their comfort zone and like making them more real. I don't think people like that. So, um, but for me, I enjoy seeing these heroes not be gods for a second and be people because some of them are like Batman. And so I enjoy reading his books. They're always fun, right? I always enjoy it. Some of the runs he's done on Batman or the arcs he's done on Batman are some of the best arcs that I've read. Uh, Heroes in Crisis so far, I I do enjoy it a lot. And so Tom King is a name just like Jeff Lemire, I feel like, that I can read and be like, okay, that's going to be a good book. Or at the very least, there'll be something in there 
that he's trying to do something different, right? For Heroes in Crisis, there's a lot of six panel grids, uh, excuse me, nine panel grids, and he's trying to do stuff that he understands comics in a way that he can try these things and like not just do a story because he's like, I'm going to write a Batman story. He's like, okay, I'm going to write this Batman story like this, right? I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to do this like this, right? The KG, KG beast in the snow, like he's like, let me just do an action scene, right? Those are the things that I enjoy when people step outside the box, box like that. And especially for somebody like Tom King to be like, let me write Batman this way. People might not like it, but this is the Batman I want to write. And for him to be 54, how many issues? What, 58 is the next one? Yeah. 58 issues in to this run, and, and he hasn't faltered from it. For me, at least, uh, that's what I want to see in a writer, that they're dedicated to what they want to tell and that they're just going to tell it. So, Well, I think it's one of those things that we live in a world where – Batman was is thought to be a god. He's a, a, ma- a god among men, even though he's a man. And I realize I am one of those people, and I think Gary can attest, the first twenty less than twenty issues, I was like, This is not my Batman. I'm not right. I don't this is not how I like this character. And then to find out that that's just how Tom King is. He lets these characters be vulnerable. When you get Mr. Miracle and this man literally is a god. And he's he wants to he, it's not that he wants to be a person, he wants to be human, but he has human problems. You've got a kid. Well, we're pregnant. Well, let's fight through these bad guys and get home. Or Batman, other than the him breaking his own back back into place, that still bugs the crap out of me. <clears throat> I I think he knows how to write these characters, and he knows how to actually give me that emotional feeling of what's going to happen, and how does this character live the way they live? Because you know what, we always think Bruce is so well trained, and he can go through whatever, and nothing ever phases him. Then you get Heroes of Crisis, and he's he's upset that he does this to these kids, and that it's all his fault. And you know what, I he knows how to write a book, and he knows how to really draw you in. And I just I know we've already talked about Jeff. The man knows how to write. He can do eight books a month, and they're all great. Yep. And he can do any genre he chooses. <laughs> I also wanted to mention because you, I forgot about it until you brought it up. Uh, Mister Miracle is probably one of my favorite books this year. Oh yeah, so good. And I was like, did did issue eleven come out in October? Yeah, must have been. So the next, I think next week. I think is no, not next week. Maybe two weeks. It's twelve because twelve is coming up. Yeah, it's in November. Huh? Crazy. It's kind of sad to think that it's ending. Ah. It is, but it's also one of those. Then it makes me excited to know what's the next book that he's going to write that is a character that I could give two craps about. Mister Miracle Vision. And then he knows how to write this book to pull me in. Yeah, Garrett, number two. Uh, my number two, um, you know, me, Alex, and Marvin, like we have one of the best sponsors of our podcast, and that would be uh, John Boylan from uh, Roots of the Swamp Thing dot com. Um, Can you I'm say his last name again. John Boylan. Boylan. I that's why I, I don't know. I wasn't list- I was listening. I think to I was still breathing heavy from the <laughs> spice. Wind, I know. I keep I looking said. at this. The the you red kept, sauce. You kind of dropped the Y there. You were. Uh, Bullet. Yeah, I know. I was trying to breathe. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thankful for him. Uh, he's been supportive of us since the very beginning. Um, you know, we've created such a great friendship with him, and we are all very lucky that he got to show us his uh, Swamp Thing Museum. Um, that was such a treat. Um, I can tell you where it is. It's a private collection, so don't worry about it. Um, but it was such an honor to be able to see uh, his collection and see what inspires him um, to love Swamp Thing, to be a huge, huge fa- uh, facet. Let's say Father. Facet. <laughs> huge facet in Swamp Thing mythology. Um, he has, he knows so much information um, about Swamp Thing, and he's got an entire database, database dedicated to it. Do you know how to talk? I can. It's the spicy food, man. I'm just using that. I think crutch. the thing is that, like, I, I think of what Boylan has, and I go, gosh, I wish I could do that for Craven the Hunter or Turtles. But then I think of that YouTube video that Marvin showed me of this other person who loves the Turtles way more than I think I than is actually, like, legal. Um, and I just, I, you know how, many, how much dedication that man has, not only yeah. to his own life and his own job but to his friends and for how much he has supported us in this three years of us talking about this and how many times he comes onto the show and uh, he makes the show so much fun and we have like fans on our show that get so excited when he comes on for our book reviews or any other special show we have for, um, for him and they're always they i think they turn into fans of his content as well or it's vice versa. Like they don't know about us. And so we just have a great relationship and, you know, I couldn't have asked for a better sponsor. Um, very thankful. Yeah. I'm thankful that 
he started off as a fan. So speaking of like thankful for fans and then turned to a sponsor and then uh, just turned into a friend. So he's a guy that he's one of those when I talk about the guests that like say, hey, you want to do this? Uh, he's always like, yep, I'll try to make it work. I really want to come on. And when he comes on, he we enjoy him being on. And I think he generally enjoys being on, too. And just talking like Alex was saying, like we just talk comics for long period of time. So like when uh, the uh, fan was like, let's, can you guys do Swag of the, Saga of the Swamp Thing volume two or book two? You're right. It is better when I say volume two. Um, <laughs> and I asked John to go, Hey, you come on for that again. Cause you were on for volume one. And he's like, certainly, yeah, like, it's definitely something that he wants to do. So, yeah. uh, yeah, it's, it's very nice to have a guest or a sponsor or anything, a friend like that, that, uh, not only supported the show from so, so early on, but also like you said, like that kind of, passion for a certain thing like he's had the passion for a swamp thing uh so when we get in a room together and it's like he can inform us about swamp thing and like we you know uh i for instance like when we walked into that museum right uh hidden can't tell you where it is we walked into that museum and you just see it uh like alex was saying the dedication to that museum and like what he has what he like he has things that are like that's the only of this that he has a swamp thing like nobody else has this to have in that room uh for me is like some sort of pride of being like look at what he's done right in here and so like to have somebody like that that like is a fan of us and on this podcast and like generally comes on here and helps want to spread the love of swamp thing you know through you know we read this book and like you say i really enjoy that you guys read that and so much information like that just the passion of that i think i speak I spoke about this on the show before mm-hmm. is like that passion is contagious and oh, that yeah. passion is great to be around. And so, uh, I really do enjoy when it comes on. So, well, I think a part of it is just how kind Boylan is. And I don't mean to be, you know, building him up, but I'm just saying that, you know, he's got people who want to send things into this museum. He's got people who go, we didn't know what else to do with the swamp thing. Would you want it? And he goes, yeah, of course. It's part of that. It's part of that swamp thing lore. It's part of that, that history. And that's what that museum is it's just history because you see all these things that he has and he knows exactly where he got it who gave it to him oh my gosh that's so I mean, knowledgeable yes he just i mean he i yeah exactly so knowledgeable and i i do love like you know we had our book club for volume one for saga the swamp thing and here all three of us had read this before that night you know looking at the covers thinking they were because they had been redone and like a reissued and like we saw those compared to he actually physically brought in the actual copies of those comics from way back copies. when. It was like, that's so unreal. Like, he has the original on the shelf copies of those comics, and they were sitting two inches away from me, and I got to look at them. And we, we held them. Show. Yeah, we he let, he let them us touch them. Is that your fair Thanksgiving uh, uh, food? Tublers? Something. Tublers. <laughs> what I are mean, they called? Is that put it called? in the stuffing. Tubers. Uh, tubers. 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 <laughs> Tublers. <laughs> number one. What's your number one, Alex? So my number one is actually the most sentimental one I have. Uh, it's Supercon. I think as for us this year, that was one of the biggest things for us to have been involved in. Um, I know we'd gone to the first one. We were invited to the second one. We were a part of it. And this was the year that um, we were asked to do a live show. So we showed up. We did the show. We met Phil Hester. Um, Boylan was there. Mikey was there. Campo Genie. Dylan was there. I mean, it was just, it was, it was like being there with all your friends and find out they're also fans. And so then we're also getting to branch out and talk to these other people. And the word is getting out about us. I mean, Supercon has done a lot for us just as a promotional way as well. I mean, when we say something, they go, Hey, Check out Wednesday Comics. Um, that was my number one as well. Is, is first off Wednesday Comics live? Like I think, how exciting when we started this. It was like, hey, it's just gonna be three guys talking about comics. Like it's, we didn't know how big this podcast would explode, and it's so cool. Like, would, did you ever think in the beginning that we'd ever do a live show? We were barely getting like two downloads an episode. Like we were like, well, I hope someone listens to this, and now we're. At, Believe me, those two were me and uh, one other person. So. Yeah, <laughs> we were at. Now we're at like a nice amount of downloads. We have a we have a fan following. Um, we had a live show. Like not many podcasts can say that. Like grow to enough that they can host a live show. And when we did, all of our guest hosts that uh, supported us came out. A lot of our fans came out. Like it, it was just so you could feel the energy in that room because everyone was just excited to be there have a good time 
And yeah, we made so many new connections at that con. And so, you know, going into our third year of this podcast, right? This will be year mm-hmm. three. Um, we'll have like, or is it four? We are in year three. Yeah, we're in year three. I think okay. you made it Yeah. No. I got confused. You were like, it's coming up. I was like, no, we're in it. Okay. I mean, whatever. <laughs> In the future, we have a lot of exciting content that we potentially could have on this show, um, as long as the con- as well as the content that you've loved so far. So, um, yeah, Wednesday Comics Live, I think, was so much fun. Supercon was amazing, um, and yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it started with us three. So, I'm bridging that to also be thankful for you guys because. Like without us three doing this together, week in week out, we've like there's been some weeks we we had to fight like hell to get a show recorded because life happens. Like you know, it, it's easy to think that hey, oh we can do it at this time on this day every week for three years. No, it's been a lot of challenges, a lot of rescheduling, scheduling family issues, um, just life happening. You know, and we make it work. Why well, somebody who like I listened to a lot of podcasts, especially before we started this show. Like mm-hmm. I listened to, uh, at that time, probably between like 12 to 15 at that time. And I was telling you guys, I was like, if we're going to do this though, we got to do it. Like yeah. there's nothing more irritating to anybody, a uh, fan of anything that where somebody is not consistent and not putting out something that they can listen to every week. So if we're going to do this, we're not, we're not going to, this, our, our promise to the fans was going to be that, um, it would be consistent and we wouldn't, you know, pull that on them. Be like, hey, we're going to do a podcast and then not come out for three months or come out for a month or even like a couple of weeks that we would at least put something out. And we would right. figure it out. Like sometimes me and Alex have done a podcast without you. We've, we've done me and Garrett without Alex here. Uh, we've done forecasts is where it's been. Uh, just, and there's even some times where I was like, you guys, you want me to just do forecasts by myself? Like at least they'll have something to listen to. And I think the no matter what comedy you get here, it's still good and it still works out. So yeah, we have a we have a base show. Now we have the forecast. We have the gauntlet. It's we have quiet. special reports. We have so many things for you to enjoy, and we enjoy doing them. So it it's still it's just it's it's just crazy to see how we've grown as a podcast, grown as a fan base, grown as having guest hosts, and grown as. By the way, this was going to be my uh, above one. And be well, like say, I was going to tell you oh, my, my above. It's not was... my one, but <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I, I also I didn't just follow think... the the parameters. I, uh, I break the parameters. Going back to Wednesday Comics Live, you both t- touched on it. Um, two things about that. You guys already touched on what already was great about the guest mm-hmm. and just like the whole experience. Um, great show i think all our guests like understood like what we were trying to do and like played along with it and it was a great show and uh three things actually i thought of a third thing um first anybody who showed up uh, like the guest that we i mean not the guest the people in the audience uh thank you for showing up yeah and uh, i actually like afterwards talked to a couple of them and it's pretty cool just to hear like how they started listening to the show and some of them started reading comics because we were talking about them and just like I said, fantastic to see a community, somebody listen to this and be like, hey, man, I should read comics and not feel like they're lost because I feel like this medium or this hobby, you can get lost very easily. So to have somebody there and then for you to reciprocate and be like, okay, let me try this. That's all we've been saying. We've tried multiple times. We're like, hey, new reader friendly. Like, hey, you can start reading these books. And I think when we look at any book, we usually bring that up. Like, you can jump into this if you want. And that's kind of like, not the main reason, but I think one of the reasons when we started the show, I was like, it's got to put a voice out there for these people who might live in a smaller town, don't have a comic book shop. They might, uh, you know, get their comics digitally and like, who are they going to talk to about these comics? And like, how do they know what to get? Like they want to jump in, but there's so much stuff to get. Uh, even just to have something they could be like, Oh, that sounds cool. Let me get that. I think that, um, is what is great about the show, but also what's great about our fans. Cause there's been fans that like have recommended stuff and I started reading and, just the whole back and forth and the reciprocation of both things. So I think, two. I yeah, I know. Just before you said, I think nothing's more rewarding than when a fan comes up to you and says, "Hey, I started reading this because you guys were talking about it on the show." And I just like, how cool is it that we inspired somebody to read a story that we already enjoyed? Like that's just really cool. Uh, two, uh, Supercon has been great from the beginning. Like Alex was saying, I think uh, Derek, Shane, Brian, all of them have been uh, great to work with. Uh, I've never. Like, for instance, the show was only supposed to be an hour long that we did. Um, and I didn't think it was fair for our guests that we would have to, like, roll through that really fast and not give them time to speak. 
at the time we didn't know Phil was going to be on the show. I just wanted to give them time, especially people that have work out there that we can promote for them. Uh, so I asked them for two hours and they were more than happy to be like, yeah, do two hours. Uh, we ended up doing, yeah, two hours. Uh, we give uh, Phil a lot of time when he came on the show, but we did a little interview with him. But just um, from the beginning, they've been great to work with. And actually after the show, Derek came up to me and was like, hey, do you think you guys would, uh, could you come back next year? And I was like, oh, I thought I would have to ask you to come back. And I was like, yeah, we'll come back. Of course, yeah. Um, and he said, okay, cool. Um, but also three, uh, Phil for being a good sport to me on the show, I yeah. think was fantastic. And then afterwards, when he was leaving for the day, he thanked us because he said that he actually had a lot of fun and it was very different than he thought it would be. And uh, he thanked us for, you know, uh, being part of it. And it was a lot of fun for him. And not to say that he's been on a podcast that's been boring before, but he said it, just, it was very different than when he was used to. And so he liked that we knew that we had an audience and that we had to play with uh, play up with the audience and do a game show rather than just doing a podcast like that. So I think it was fantastic having the show and he, a lot of insight. Uh, I think for me, uh, actually, when I interviewed him uh, about some questions like from the artist side and how things are done and how he sees the world and how he sees his work. And uh, I thought it was great. And um I would love to have him back on the show and talk some more about that, but we'll see. Absolutely. You guys went already? My number one, yeah. I was going to say actually part of that, what I was talking about before is uh, my uh, change over to digital, so digital comics and like Hoopla and like Marvel uh, Alt, uh, Unlimited, like all these kind of different avenues in which to get comics. Because I feel like for me, it was more of a convenience thing because uh, I find myself more busy uh, these days. And so on Wednesday, I was all struggling to f- get to the comic book shop and then we have a show to do on Thursday and then Thursday I would get home like okay well if I go it's going to kill time and uh, so for me it's just a convenience thing but I do see and I was reading an article that a lot of readers who aren't the usual comic demographic like female readers or younger readers or even people who are older uh, get a lot of digital comics and this Hoopla is a great uh, service from the library so you can get read comics for free and then Marvel Limited, I think, is great for going back and reading other stuff. But I do like that there are these options available for people now so they can go out there and these people who don't have a comic book shop near them can now read comics and see what we're talking about or see what anybody's talking about and read these comic books and just reach out that hobby that used to be where you had to be near something and, and go inside and be like, okay, I don't know what to get. At least now digitally, you can kind of like read a preview, like listen to a podcast and it'll be available for you. There's a lot of things, you know, in print, it has to be at that shop, right? Otherwise, it's not going to be there, or you have to have a shop in general. But in digital, at least, you could be like, okay, I want to read that thing they were talking about, and there it is. Mm-hmm. So I just think it's helping expand. It's one of the things that's helping expand this hobby and this community that is great for it, in which a hobby that could be shrinking, I know digitally is growing, and that's why more people are kind of making digital exclusive comics. Um, Marvel does it with like this, and with the Jessica Jones series that Kelly Thompson was writing or is writing right now, um, but you guys didn't even know that's coming out um, mm. <laughs> and things like that. So I do like, and I do know you guys like physical books more, but I do know like for some people it's not an option. Yeah. So for them, I am thankful that we have digital comics so that more people can be involved in this community and this hobby rather than, you know, keeping it to like, these are the people who can do it. And like, it's intimidating going into a comic shop. Like the remember the mm-hmm. first time you walked in, it's like crazy. You know, right. there's still times when I, we go in weekly. It still can be intimidating. Yeah, well, Gary right. said he was down in Omaha and he went to a new one, and he said it was like whoa, overwhelming. Oh, right? lo- yeah. When you go to the Krypton, Krypton Comics, Comics, I love that ginormous. place. Ginormous. It is so organized. But can you imagine? It is very organized. That was what I was impressed by. But can you imagine? You walk in, you know nothing about comics. Where do yeah. you start? Oh, dude. I think, it, but it, you're right. That is a hard thing to get into because I remember some of the first comic books I was getting, and it wasn't even ones that Marvin had lent me. Where it's like, okay, most of these made sense, other than action comics ones were just everywhere. I would go into the shop and I would look for, oh, Deadpool number fourteen. Okay, well, what do I read next? What's which cover is thirteen? Which one's what? I mean, yeah, they all say one for thirteen or twenty nine. It's like, yeah, but which is that actually the right series that this goes to? Because there's 28 different versions of Deadpool now. It's like, well, which one do I need to be reading? Right. Well, I th- so I think the great thing is, is that so like even like digitally, just getting issues. If you go up there and you want to get a Deadpool 14, it shows you all the issues in the series, and then you can be like, okay, let me start at one, and at least that way it's organized in a way like I can go back to number one and get it. Because at least you know, like I said, in a shop might not have it, but for them, it's easier to be like, let me try things and let me try to reach out here rather than 
you know, be f- fearful of being embarrassed, being like, hey, can I get this book? And then I'm not saying I, our comic book shop here is great and other comic book shops. I've never been to a comic book shop where they've judged well, one, I, <laughs> but they judge me. But uh, sometimes you go to places and uh, I have her st- uh, stories, not, nothing around here, but where people go in and they may give me fun of for reading a certain book. Like they might get fun of me reading Deadpool being like, oh, you like that? That's popular. Like, you know what I mean? So online, at least they can feel like they can read something and not be judged by it. Also, though, Hoopla is a great service because you can just try stuff. It doesn't cost money. So you can try something like Alex said and say, do I like this? And then jump into these worlds that are fantastic and not have to worry about, am I spending 20 bucks on this thing I'm not going to like? Yeah. And then maybe you enjoy that so much, you go, I'm going to actually want this physical. And then you can go to the shop and get it. You know, you can order on Amazon. You can do whatever you need to do. But I like that this is not, this is breaking open that barrier that we had before where it's like you have to have a comic shop and you have to know what you want to get. Um, or you have to like be some, or just some sort of research, like, and you can just jump on and you can read it anywhere. You can bring your whole collection with you. And so for me, not that I like, it needs to replace anything, but I think it's a nice little side Avenue for people to take, to be like, let me try this. And all the new people that they get from it, I think is fantastic. That's what I'm thankful for. Well, actually I got one thing and I would assume you guys probably agree with me. I'm thankful for you too. We've done this show. Mom, before we made the show, and it's been three years of just three good friends. I'd even throw out maybe best friends hanging out on a weekly basis, doing the forecast, doing the gauntlet, doing this, hanging out in the back seat of Garrett's car for the first 25, 30 episodes of the gauntlet. Um, Marvin doing all the editing and all the, the hard work. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You are a lot of the big push on us doing this. Uh, we had started out doing WordPress and writing up things. And it's like, you know what? That's not my strong suit. I'd much rather just tell you what I think and much better with actual saying words than actually typing words. If there was a cliffhanger to a Wednesday Comics comic, like issue number one, it'd be like, it'd be Marvin being like, well, what if we did a podcast? Well, I mean, that was always the, <laughs> when, I, when we first started, that was also the thing I was like, that's what I wanted to do. But I was like, there's no way that's too ex- like expensive. How do you even do it? I didn't know anything about it. And I was like, well, this WordPress thing, like I've written blogs before. Like I know how to do this. Let's do this instead. And uh, I enjoy writing. I enjoy doing that. But I could tell, you know, you guys didn't like doing that. Um, so I was like, you know what? This originally was supposed to be a podcast. And I was like, but can you do it? And I'm going to actually ask this multiple times. And it is 100% true that uh, John on Demand from Comic Book Look, once I was at his birthday party, and he said, and uh, I've told him about the website that we have and yada, yada, yada. And he's like, so why don't you do, he goes, I told him, you know, I mean, the grand plan is we're talking about it, about maybe doing a podcast, right? It was, uh, his birthday's in December, it was around December, around the winter season. And I was like, yeah, but can you like what is I don't, I don't know what that costs i don't know how to even do that and he's like well you guys I, you guys are very knowledgeable about comics and i think people would enjoy talking listen to you so uh fast forward to like i spent time researching it how do you do it and you guys were like hey i don't like doing this writing thing um and i was like yeah but i really want to do this how much is it going to cost and we're doing a lot of research because it, it 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 isn't something very easy to figure out I'll tell you that much right now. Like it, it's very hard to figure out. Like, a, how do you record it? What equipment do you get? How do you upload to sites? Like, how do you like? How does it even work at all? Um, it's very different now. Actually, there's actually way more choices now than there were back then. It's only been three years, but it's it's still it's changed a lot. And podcasts have blown up since then. When we were doing, people were like, what's a podcast now? There's like every single. I think everybody has like a podcast in terms of like publications, celebrities. Everybody has a podcast. So, okay. but um. I remember that, uh, you know, all this planning and they say, hey, do we want to do this? You guys saying, hey, and I'm going to bring it to you guys. But like, so I remember my son being born and my son was born premature. And I remember thinking about it and we had been talking about it loosely. And I think I was like, okay, I'm going to talk to the guys. And I wrote something up, like a long text. I wrote it in a notepad because it was so long. And I was like, I'm going to send this to them. And I was like, you know what? I think I told you guys, hey, you want to come over or something like that? Or you want to meet up? And I think we had a face-to-face talk and I was like, do you want to do this? Like, I think we can do this. I like, I worked it out. I know what equipment we need. I figured out how you get it going. We just need to figure out, like, if we're going to, like I said before, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this consistently. That's my only three, th- my only three things were like consistently, we would have to do it. So I didn't you know you guys are going to be with me and be dedicated, which you have. And I'm thankful for that. That actually is something like I never planned that we would be this dedicated to this. I mean, I knew I was, but, and I knew at 
three years ago that you guys were really into comics, but I couldn't say, hey, I'm going to jump off this bridge. You want to come with me on this podcast thing? And you guys have been there. I like how we jumped <laughs> off a bridge. <laughs> well, or you jumped off a bridge. Well, we, I didn't say we, we got parachutes. Um, we got a parachute. It says, when is it comics on? <laughs> One parachute between three guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> Strapped to me. So to be consistent about it in that way, uh, too, I said that I want to make a show that, like, is structured enough that it's not just us being here and like not knowing to talk about. So like we would have to work on like making sure that it actually is a show. If we're going to do a show, we're going to do a show. Um, and three, I said that I don't want it for a show to be like overly negative, right? If we're going to talk about it, we're going to critique comics and be like, this doesn't work. This does work. And it's going to be something where we go through it. And it's not something where we just come on here and be like, yeah, like, cause I, there's tons of podcasts out there. There's just people being like, yeah, it's not good. All right, let's move on to the next one. Like, no, no, let's spend time on it. If we're going to review it, that's why we only spend you know time talking about six comics because we want to talk about them. We're not going to spend time talking about twenty comics and just be like, oh, that was good. That was an eight out of ten. I mean, next that book. was the first like ten issue episodes. That's what it was. We're just talking. Yeah, about we were trying to figure it out. Like five minute borders. Yeah. Um, and we used to do that late. We used to not do it on time. And that was something also that I'm grateful you guys were like, hey, how about we do this on the Thursday afterwards? So that way, it's uh, this week's comics and not the last week's comics. Um, and you guys, uh, agreed and we decided to go on this, uh, mainly because and I bring up my son being born pre- premature because, uh, you know, he was in the NICU and I remember being like sitting there being like, yeah, why don't I just do it? What's going to happen? Either we do it and like, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And at least I tried, I know that, or we're going to do it and we're going to have a good time with it. And that was the thing too. We're either gonna have a good time with it and I'll have something that I can, you know, I'll be a fan of. And I actually do listen to our show around some while and I, because I don't have a good memory and I was to an old show. I'm like, Hey, that was funny. Um, I remember that now. And, or C, it'll be something. And luckily it turned out to be C and not the first two. And it is something that like now when we come here every night, I'm not like, this is all secondhand now. Like I know how to do this. I know how to do all that. Uh, certainly one day we can get better equipment. We can be, become bigger than this is, but like all the stuff that I thought was hard, wasn't hard. And all the stuff that I was worried about, like, not doing consistently, you guys have made it easy. Has never been anything where I'm like, God, really? Can we do a show? Like you're always like, yeah, let's try to work it out. And it's always something that we come here and I would say from episode <laughs> one, the passion's still there. The last show we just mm-hmm. recorded was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and good. it's still something we come here and be like, let's put something out there that's not only be something that we would enjoy listening to, that maybe somebody else goes to. Like I said, somebody who like lives nowhere and it's like, hey, let me download this comic book app and started getting comic books because I found their show and I listened to it and that sounds cool. And then maybe you can make a new fan out of comics. Well, I, I was driving over here tonight to the studio and I, I thought about, I was like, you know what my favorite things about these, these shows that we've been doing actually since we all got different schedules was that we record earlier. And so it's less of us trying to get through the show and it's just more of us talking. And I, I think that's my favorite part about this is that we actually do get passionate about what we're talking about. Secret Files a couple of weeks ago when we talked about it, I was like, ah, oh, you know, I really didn't have a lot to say. Then I'm sitting with you two, and all we got is 20 minutes of conversation. We literally dissect and what happened and that, in that comic. Yeah, it's like, <clears throat> that's the thing, is you can have, like, surface-level thoughts about a comic, but without having other people's perspectives about that comic, you don't, you might be missing things that you thought you understood, but now it just opens up a whole other path that you're like, oh, I never even noticed that. Well, I want to read this, this, and this because I noticed that thing in this comic. Well, and I think that's the strong thing about the show is at least for amongst the three of us, obviously, when we're bringing guest hosts, they they offer other experiences that we may not have or other ideas. But I think all three of us have a different thought process on how things go. Obviously, myself, uh, way too serious about everything. And I'm kind of pessimistic. I, I expect to be let down in these books. And then I got you two up, you know, bringing me up. And you both have these other experiences of knowledge outside of just the comic book itself. But it's the comic book world of how the writers or how it gets edited or all, I mean, all these things that I don't know about. I'm, I'm oblivious to it. I'm all about how is that gun supposed to have been loaded that way because that's wrong. <laughs> How does Batman get? How does out he of- get out of that cage? <laughs> and he has the damn tooth thing. <laughs> That's good. So, all right. So, so, more importantly, I thank you for you guys doing the show for three years, and I still love doing this. It doesn't feel like a job. And I, oh, that was something too. I when I first said, I said, "Hey, like uh, I told you guys to make sure that you keep me honest because I don't want this to become like a chore for you guys or like a job to you guys that it's still fun." 
Uh, so even though I want to structure, I didn't want it to be like something that you dread coming to. And right. I, I do think it's still fun. Well, well, even when I edit it, I find I have fun at it. Well, there's, there's, um, so a couple weeks ago, we actually had a, a scheduling error where I had kind of felt like shit and I was like, oh, guys, I'm not going to make it. Just do the show without me. And you're like, no, we're going to wait. So he ended up waiting for me and we just rescheduled to do the show together. Cause I have to admit, the show is fun when it's just Marvin and I or when it's just you and I, Garrett. But the team is the best when we actually are all together. All three together, yeah. And we're, uh, yeah, I mean, we we rally as a crew, basically. So if we know that there's going to be a couple weeks where it's going to be harder to do it, we'll make it work. So we'll find ways. We'll do whatever we can to make sure that you get your podcast once a week. So Wednesday Comics 605 at gmail.com. Let us know what you're thankful for. Not only in comics, in the world. Uh, it's a big, big world. They call it a wide, uh, world wide web. You know that? WWW. Um, <laughs> not the deep web. Uh, deep fall. On Twitter at Wednesday Comics. That's all of us. Or you can do at Alex Mastrello. I'll talk to that guy. Number at one. Garot 2188 for that guy. And at Marvin underscore Salguero for me. Facebook.com slash Wednesday Comics Podcast. Make sure you like that and send it to your friends and make them, uh, not make them, but ask, <laughs> make them like say, it. Say, hey, this is a cool thing. Get, I mean, Going back to that thing I told you about before, like if you know someone who likes those movies, and be like, hey, you should listen to these guys. Even if they don't read comic books, maybe they'll listen to the show and be like, hey, that sounds cool. And then you, any you comic book uh, fan will be out there, and then you can start talking about comics. So if you're trying to get your friend into it, we'll help out. Uh, 605-215-1849, that's where you would drop a voicemail, uh, especially for our book club, right, Garrett? Wednesday Comics, League of Extraordinary Gentle People proudly presents Saga of the Swamp Thing, Volume 2. It's so good every time. Uh, that is Alan Moore, second uh, book of Alan Moore. So we're going to get into that uh, first week of January, right? Yes, January 4th. Maybe a little scheduling difference, but it's supposed to be that week of January 4th. We'll talk about that uh, right in the middle of winter. That's the way Swamp Thing would want it. Um, maybe we'll be reading that book and having uh, memories of, of summer in the swamp. That's where I grew up. YouTube, go to YouTube. You can find uh, The Gauntlet. That's where we're at. Um, and also... Wrong arm, uh, Marvin. Well, I'm holding the mic with that. Arm. The uh, show, audio form, if you want to listen to the show, audio form on there. Uh, once again, I am looking for more video content, but once again, like I said, a little busy right now. So uh, we are looking to get more video content going. Oh, we're going to do that tour. Do that pretty soon. Um, what tour? Of our your rooms. collections again. <sighs> okay. Get it together. So. I need to get my ceiling fixed first, so... Yeah. To TBD. <laughs> to be... <laughs> Um, do, 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 do find the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, or Spotify. Make sure you tell a friend and make sure if you got a second, go to iTunes and leave a review. It really helps out a lot. It puts us in an algorithm who, uh, and then if somebody likes comic books, it throws them in their face. So we're trying to throw <laughs> that sound you made. <laughs> throw, <laughs> throw the podcast in people's face. No, we're not trying to do that. Um, that's all. That's all we got, boys. Thanksgiving today. DC World Swampy. Oh, yeah. Roots of the Swamp Thing dot com. How did I forget that? Uh, I don't know. Our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> I need to put this somewhere where I can actually see it. I used to have it next to me so I could hold it up for you, and it's been behind Roots you. Roots of the Swamp Thing dot com, your definitive source for all things Swamp Thing. Make sure to go to DC World Swampy on Twitter or at Facebook.com slash Roots of the Swamp Thing or go to Roots of the Swamp Thing dot com for more information of the Avatar of the Green. That's John Boylan and Holland Files number three coming soon. Um, and make sure, actually, uh, I can announce this. He told me that uh, that I'm going to write an article. So I'm not sure which one, three or four, but uh, I got a deadline coming up here. So that's Sweet. why I'm busy. But that and some other reasons. But um, good show, guys. Right yeah. now I'm probably sleeping, I'm assuming, when the show comes out. Well, we'll see when I drop the show. Noon, maybe? No, a little before sticking to go somewhere. Uh, I got that corn. I probably ate that corn. Tastes good. Of course. Stuffing. Yeah. Corn, corn, stuffing, turkey. pumpkin pie. You know what's great? I really don't have any more because we go somewhere for Thanksgiving. But when I used to live at home, we used to have Thanksgiving at home. Those leftovers, man. Like, oh, ooh, the buddy. Best. Oh, really? I hate leftovers. After turkey sandwich? Oh. You don't do turkey nope. sandwich? Like this, my, my mom and dad and I, we do pizza now. She used to make the dinner, but we're going to have dinner out at my wife's family's house. So it's like, I don't really need to have two. Hold up a second. For Thanksgiving, you have a pizza? Mm-hmm. Alex Pastrell. Yep. <gasps> my name, I am Italian. You are Italian, but oh, that's, I get that's true. Um, friend of the show, David Hoover, his uh, mom makes lasagna. So. Um, uh, do, are you guys that, those weirdos that, like me, when you have ham and turkey, you'll just make a ham and turkey sandwich? 
I, I would like if ham. I did. Yeah, I like, I like ham. ham. Um, I also it's like just thick bacon. Weird, weird, uh, weird thing. I like. I like turkey hearts. So you ate the turkey. <laughs> what the fuck there's is going tiny, on? Here? There's a tiny little heart. Uh, oh my god! Well, I think we understand what a turkey. Heart I know. Is. I'm just saying that like they it usually come like they're huge, and then when they get cooked, they're. We're talking about what you like the the turkey and the ham, and I was like, oh, I like turkey hearts. You're fucking weird. Yeah. Oh. You throw that in your pizza? I would. The animal? I do. I would. Turkey I, heart pizza? I would. I would. Jesus. I would eat a whole like bowl of just turkey hearts. God, like, they're so good. It's called the murder pie. Like, they're right chew- there. God, they're just. Jeez. They got some good solid chew. Yeah, you could put turkey hearts and call it like Sweeney Todd. Well, I'm sorry to scar you guys. I didn't know Alex was going to go down the heart route. I didn't know he was a monster like that. But you know, sometimes monsters need to be thankful also. So to thank for the monsters in the dark is to keep all the heroes in the light. My name is Marvin. I'm Alex. I'm Garrett. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Keep turning those pages.